Hello everyone, welcome back to Relative Security and today we are going to start a new series for covering the critical security controls. This first video will be covering just a little bit of a history on critical security controls and we will also discuss the first control and then there will be other controls that will be, that will be discussed in the subsequent videos. So the center of internet security controls formerly known as SANS top 20 critical security controls is basically a set of best practices for cybersecurity developed by a global community of experts. So these controls are designed to provide specific and actionable guidance to help organizations improve their cybersecurity posture and effectively defend against any cyber threat. So leading a global community of IT professionals critical security controls have been defined. CAS consistently refines these standards to proactively address emerging threats and deliver products and services for comprehensive safeguarding. So when we talk about the ecosystem around CIS, it is important to understand that whether you opt for the CIS controls or do you use another approach to shape your security improvement program, it's very crucial to understand that the essence extends beyond the list itself. It's not the, just the list of controls that, um, and that matter the most. Because while you're obtaining a credible list of security recommendations, and it's very recommended as well, however, it should be only viewed as a stepping stone. The key to improving your cybersecurity program lies in examining the ecosystem that evolves around this list. For example, consider the aspects like available training, supplementary information, explanations, implementation insights from others, and the existence of a marketplace offering vendor tools and services. Additionally, think about how to measure progress or maturity and align these efforts with the diverse regulatory and compliance frameworks applicable to your context. Because you are the best sole judge of your own context in which context you have to improve your um, cybersecurity program. So these cyber critical security controls that we will be discussing, they represent a set of recommended measures to increase your cyber defense and offers concrete and actionable strategies to counteract prevalent cyber threats effectively. These controls are very impactful and they compromise, um, uh, sorry, they are comprising a concise list of top priority defensive actions. They will be serving as an essential starting point for any enterprise which aims to enhance its cyber defense. Okay. When, when it comes to implementation groups, so these controls and their implementation groups are basically self-assessed categories for enterprises. Each implementation group identifies a subset of particular CIS controls that the community has broadly assessed to be applicable for an enterprise with a similar risk profile and resources to strive to implement. These implementation groups represent a horizontal look across the CIS controls tailored to different types of enterprises. For example, IG1, implementation group one is known as essential cyber hygiene. It would be considered as the foundation foundational set of cyber defense safeguards that every enterprise should apply to guard against the most common attacks. So we will be discussing these implementation groups. For example, the IG1 enterprise, basically known as the basic cyber hygiene. This enterprise, IG, uh, anybody which, is, which comes under the implementation group one, will be characterized by being small to medium sized with a limited focus on the IT and cybersecurity due to the constrained expertise and resources. 
their primary concern is maintaining business operations with minimal tolerance for downtime. The data they handle is of low sensitivity, primarily consisting of employee and financial information. So the safeguards chosen for the implementation groups, enterprises, should be very simple to implement even with limited cybersecurity expertise. They should be basically aiming to defend against general non-target attacks. And these controls that will be discussed in the implementation group one, they can be implemented using commercial off-the-shelf hardware and software, which reflects the budget constraints and technological environment typical of such enterprises. When it comes to grade two enterprises, they typically employ personal tasks with managing and safeguarding its IT infrastructure. So they have a whole team of uh, people to ensure that the infrastructure is being properly managed. These enterprises serve multiple departments with varying risk levels based on their respective functions and goals. Additionally, smaller units within the IG2 enterprises may face regulatory compliance obligations. These enterprises very often handle sensitive client or enterprise data and are expected to maintain operational continuity, even in the face of short service interruptions. Any loss of public confidence resulting from a breach can become a major concern for these entities. So, to address the increased operational complexity and security challenges, these enterprises have to select a certain set of critical security controls. These controls may require enterprise-grade technology and specialized expertise for proper installation, configuration, and reflecting the advanced security measures necessary for protecting sensitive information and ensuring operational resilience. The last one, the IG3, these, enterprise, these enterprises place a high priority on cybersecurity and employ security experts with specialized skills to address various aspects of cybersecurity, such as risk management, penetration testing, and application security. So this indicates that the organization recognizes the importance of protecting sensitive information and functions, which can be subject to regulatory and compliance requirements as well. Aspect. Another important aspect of this group would be the availability of services. Organization also values the uninterrupted availability of its services in addition to maintaining the confidentiality, integrity of sensitive data. So this indicates a holistic approach to cybersecurity, considering not just the data protection, but also the operational aspects of the enterprise. It is important to mention that these groups, the IG3, emphasizes the potential harm that the successful cyber attacks can cause to the public welfare, underscoring the seriousness of cybersecurity threats for such enterprises. As a result, the controls implemented by the IG3 enterprise must be capable of mitigating targeted attacks from sophisticated adversaries and reducing the impact of zero-day attacks, which are particularly challenging due to their unforeseen nature and lack of proper mitigation measures. So let's discuss the first control, inventory and control of enterprise assets. This CIS control emphasizes the active management of all enterprise assets including end-user devices, network devices, IoT devices, and servers. This involves inventorying, tracking, and correcting assets connected physically, virtually, remotely, and within the cloud environments. Basically, anywhere, if there is any asset that is connected to your network, should be managed by you. The objective is very simple. It is to have an accurate understanding of all assets requiring monitoring and protection within the enterprise. Additionally, this control helps identify unauthorized and unmanaged assets 
enabling their removal or remediation for enhanced security. So why this control is very important? First is asset management. As we discussed just now, enterprises must be aware of all of their assets to effectively defend against cyber threats. Managed control over assets is very crucial for security monitoring, incident response and recovery. Identifying critical data and managing assets through proper asset management helps apply the necessary security controls. If we talk about the external attackers perspective, the external attackers continuously scan enterprise address spaces, looking for unprotected assets that could be exploited. Unidentified or insecurely configured assets, both internal and external, pose vulnerabilities to malware and adversarial access. Internally ident unidentified assets can also have weak security configurations that can make them vulnerable to web or email based malware and adversaries can leverage weak security configurations for traversing the network once they are inside. So it's also essential to identify and isolate these additional assets like demonstration or temporary systems to safeguard the enterprise operations. There could be temporary systems introduced into the environment for let's say a vendor POC or <clears throat> some guest machines. So these should be identified and they should be isolated from the rest of the enterprise network. Because managing large dynamic environment is very challenging and attackers can exploit any gaps that they can find. This dynamic nature of end user devices and the complexity of cloud environments adds to the difficulty of maintaining an accurate asset inventory. Another challenge would be the portable end user devices that periodically join a network and then disappear, making the inventory of currently available assets very dynamic. Likewise, cloud environments and virtual machines can be difficult to track in asset inventories when they are shut down or paused. Lastly, one more important thing before to discuss would be the incident response. If you do not know your environment, the incident response would be very difficult for you. And the asset management, comprehensive asset management will aid you when it comes to incident response by tracing the origin of the network traffic and quickly identifying potentially vulnerable assets during the security incidents. So what are the different activities that should be done when it comes to proper identifying the assets? So this control emphasizes a comprehensive process integrating both technical and procedural measures to manage the inventory of enterprise assets and associated data throughout their life cycle. It should be established that the data or asset owners should be linked to the business governance for each business process component. And in the large scale enterprises, they can use some specific products for IT asset inventories, while the smaller ones can utilize any existing security tools. I mean, it depends on the organizational size and their budget if they can use some um, uh, commercial product or they want to use some open source softwares to maintain their asset inventory. Different activities can be done. For example, network discovery scans can be done. The logs can be reviewed from various security tools and the assets identified in the logs and through the, through the discovery scans can be kept as a record in the database or a spreadsheet. Maintaining an up-to-date view of assets is an ongoing and dynamic process which often requires a crowdsourced approach due to diverse provisioning sources. This is also important to uh, discuss that there are different sources from where you can understand that what are the different assets that are present in your um, 
in your uh, organization. Regular scans, diverse packet types, and the data collection from cloud portals and enterprise platform contribute to a high confidence count of assets. Larger enterprises can tap into the additional sources like Active Directory, Single Sign-On, Multi-Factor Authentication, VPN IDS, and DPI or MDM. So, in short, property, properly inventorying your assets is very important. And these are the different places from where we can identify the assets that are authorized and which are not authorized. To make sure that whenever it's needed, we do have a complete and comprehensive list of our assets. So this was the control one of the critical security controls. In the subsequent vid videos, we will be discussing at least two controls in each video. So don't forget to like and subscribe this channel and make sure that you give a thumbs up to this video as well. And we will come back with another um, video of critical cybersecurity controls. Thank you so much.